May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. We are continuing our journey uh, through the letter of 1 Thessalonians. And today, again, we are going to just look at one verse, actually two words, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. And it simply reads, it's an exhortation, pray continually. Older translations use the words, pray without ceasing. Just like last Sunday, we, are, we looked at verse uh, 16, rejoice evermore. <laughs> is it possible to rejoice all the time? And the answer is yes. And we looked at 12 ways by which we could uh, deepen the joy in our heart. And today, similarly, we raised the question, can we pray all the time? And the answer is yes. And we are going to see how we can do that. Now, there's a very wonderful companion verse uh, to 1 Thessalonians 5.17 in Ephesians 6, verses 18 and 19. And so we want you to look at uh, those two verses as it comes up on the screen. Ephesians 6, 18 and 19. And if you have a pen, you may want to just mark a few words here. Pray in the spirit on all occasions. Pray as guided by the Holy Spirit, empowered and energized by the Holy Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers, all kinds of prayers, confession prayers, thanksgiving prayers. And we are going to look at some of those prayers uh, as we conclude our sermon today with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert always. I love that word always. Be alert always. Be always vigilant. That's another way of putting it. Keep on praying. Uh, I would like you to underline those three words. Keep on praying for all the Lord's people. You know, one of my favorite words in the Bible is the word all. Pray for all God's people. And Paul kind of adds a PS, don't forget me. Pray for me also. Pray for me while you're praying for others. So this again is a very good scripture that reinforces uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Uh, back in Colombo, many, many, many years ago, when I was a teenager, we had a beloved pastor who loved to quote this one stanza uh, on prayer. And I'll never forget it. I never understood it. But uh, listening to it so many times, it got so deeply embedded in my soul. These are the words of James uh, Montgomery. And just look at the words. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire uttered or unexpressed. There is a deep desire in my heart, and uh, that desire at times breaks out into vocal language, but most of the times it remains kind of hidden inside the heart, unexpressed. The motion of a hidden fire that trembles in the breast, the motion of a hidden fire. That's what prayer is. It is a, it is a fire in the soul uh, waiting to find release. Is that how you look at prayer? Maybe the, the first time uh, almost all of you are looking at this particular uh, quotation. I really want you to think it through and say, God, make this a reality in my life. The words of James Montgomery. William Carey, the missionary to India, said, secret, fervent, believing prayer lies at the root of all personal godliness. Do you want to be holy? Do I want to be holy? Yes. Then you and I must be committed to praying secret, 
fervent believing prayers that's the secret of godliness and holiness <laughs> it is so what is prayer it is not in the moving of the lips that the essence of prayer consists it is in the elevation of the heart to god prayer is the elevation of the heart to god and prayer cannot be measured by the movement of the lips prayer is the natural outgushing of a soul in communion with the lord jesus the natural spontaneous outgushing of the soul in communion with the lord jesus i am always looking for prayer quotes i am always looking for prayer definitions because i want to increase my level of prayer i want to intensify my prayer life and so i i look for freshness i look for quotes that inspire me that challenge me that takes me to the next level in prayer and these are some of the quotes that i came across uh, just this last week now we are going to look at uh, pray continually under three headings uh, point a is the meaning what do we mean when we say pray continually and there are three components to praying continually in terms of its definition or meaning it is a spirit of dependence that should permeate all what we do a total dependence upon god that is what prayer is this is the very spirit and essence of prayer so even when we are not speaking consciously to god there is a deep abiding dependence on him that is woven into the heart of faith lean on god all the time never give up looking to him for help that is what is meant by pray continually you are continuously depending upon the lord leaning upon him clinging to him uh the dear mother who lost a 20 year old daughter uh 6 weeks ago lost her own mother and she called me and said i just can't take it i just can't take it i mean in 6 weeks how can i go through two funerals and i only told her cling to the lord just cling to him there's nothing else you can do nothing else i can do cling to him and that's what i want to encourage you to do uh, to pray continually lean on him and cling to him now the second meaning of this expression pray continually praying repeatedly and often to put it another way recurring prayer recurring prayer now if you look at romans 19 you get an idea of what recurring prayer is all about for god whom i serve in my spirit in the preaching of the gospel of his son is my witness as to how unceasingly i make mention of you and there you have a classic example of praying continually paul writing to the roman christians is saying god is my witness how often i think of you and i lift you up to the lord in prayer that is praying continually so all of a sudden a face might come across the screen of your mind and that is the spirit prompting you to pray for that person right so there are structured times of prayer but equally prayer has got to be very spontaneous happening all the time paul mentioned them over and over and often so praying without ceasing doesn't mean that verbally or mentally we have to be speaking prayers every minute of the day that is humanly not possible but we should pray over and over and often our default mental state should be oh god i got an email about a young man with severe mental illness suicidal and when i read that email i just lifted my hands up and i said oh god have mercy on sc 
that is praying continuously. All of you receive emails, you get WhatsApp messages, and naturally and spontaneously does your heart rise up to heaven and you say without even thinking, oh God, and you're lifting up that person or that situation. Make the default mental state a Godward longing. Your heart is pulled Godward, heavenward, and that is praying without ceasing. A third meaning of praying without ceasing is never giving up on prayer. Don't abandon the God of hope and say there's no point in praying. Go on praying, don't stop it, don't abandon prayer. And this next line is something that I'm personalizing more and more. Continue in prayer until the last moment of your life. I always desire that uh, when the time comes for me to go to heaven, it should happen while I'm preaching. Uh, I, that, that has always been a long desire of my heart. And now that desire is uh, kind of beginning to shift a little bit. And uh, I'm saying now, may I be in an attitude of prayer to my God when he calls me home. So Dr. David Livingston, pioneer missionary to Africa and to China, labored long and hard. And uh, finally, uh, when he died uh, in Africa, they opened the little hut where he was. And there he was on his knees with his head on the little bed. And while he was praying, God called him home. And I said to myself, what a way to go. What a way to go. Continue in prayer until the last moment of your life. <laughs> Just as we breathe without ceasing, so we must pray without ceasing. Satan will come along and whisper in your ears, as he has done to me on many occasions, stop praying. What's the result of prayer? Are things really changing? Is the world getting to be a better place? You prayed for Joe for so long. What's happening to Joe? He's going from bad to worse. And I hear that whisper all the time. <laughs> and I had to rebuke the devil. And I have to say, prayer works. Prayer works. So that's the threefold meaning of pray without ceasing. Now we are going to look at point B, the motivations to prayer. And I wish you would write these 24 words down. Please, if you are able to write it down. You know why? Because this is what you are going to use as you want to pray continually. And all is words so that it will stick in your mind, right? So I want to give you a group of 12 people, 12 people groups that you and I could be constantly praying to God for. And the first on the list is the most obvious. <laughs> we pray for sinners. We pray for sinners. By the way, just to remind you, all of us are sinners. We are all wayward sheep. We are all children of disobedience. We are all objects of God's wrath, right? So we pray for sinners. They are all around you. They are in your house. They are in your neighborhood, they are in your school, they are at your workplace. So we pray for sinners. Never stop praying for sinners. The salvation of the lost. And uh, yesterday at our Bible study, I was saying, uh, a, a person who had converted from Hinduism, his birthday. So I called him and I inquired after his parents. And his parents are, are both still Hindu. And they are advanced in age. And I said, uh, you know, uh, are they open to the gospel? And uh, he very sadly said, no, they are not open to the gospel. They are very resistant. And instantly my heart ached deep down and I prayed for them. That is what is meant by praying continually, right? You know, at death, that's it, isn't it? If you don't have Christ, 
right that's it final goodbye and that's why beloved do all your praying now do all your praying now after death too late so we pray for sinners the second group is we pray for seekers these are people in whose heart god has ignited a desire for him they still haven't come to the lord but they are taking baby steps in coming towards the lord seekers and they are seeking because the holy spirit has begun a work in their heart and uh, they want to know more and uh, they want to believe eventually but they want all the facts and again god in his uh, grace and mercy places seekers around us so be uh, very sensitive to seekers right when you open up spiritual subjects they respond they are willing to talk they ask questions they are what i call green fruit you have ripe fruit green uh, and green fruit ripe fruit ready for plucking you can pluck and eat ripe fruit green fruit you shouldn't pluck it before it's time it's no use if you pluck it before it's time i have done that with mangoes and i have paid a heavy price i couldn't wait for the mango to turn yellow and i plucked it and it was immature it couldn't be eaten so seekers are green fruit they are asking questions they are inquisitive they are interested and we need to pray for them and keep gently dropping seed into their heart gospel seed into their heart the third category are the strayers these are people who at one time yes they made a profession of following christ they came to church they may have been even baptized and uh, came for youth meetings but today you can't even find them <laughs> they don't respond uh, you can't find them uh, the other word i know andrew loves to use this word backsliders these are the backsliders so we pray for those who have strayed and you can think of those friends that you have associated with who today are far from the lord though at one point they did show some kind of interest and again how our hearts should ache for them and how we should pray for them that they would come back to the lord right and very often they come back to the lord through very very distressing circumstances through distressing circumstances painful circumstances and we pray for them then number 4 we pray for those who are seduced seduced means those who are deceived by satan these are people who have gone into wrong teachings a uh, wrong belief system right and every single day the devil is actively seducing people that's his master weapon uh, deception uh, seduction and uh, the younger generation he seduces by holding all kinds of carrots in front of them you know the lure of wealth and fame and uh, or pleasure uh, all those carrots are dangled in front of the younger generation and the younger generation eagerly bites the carrot and they fall so that's why in my old age i'm still committed to youth ministry i love young people i'll chase you wherever you are i'll pull you out from wherever you are hiding why because i love you i care for you and i want to see you follow the lord jesus christ become passionate for him and from among the young people that i see here i am praying genuinely i am praying that god is going to raise up the next generation of pastors as we old fellows uh, fade off you all are the ones who are going to take the ball and run and we want to hand the baton over to you right so be open to that possibility of the lord calling you into ministry right you may have your own plans but the lord has ways of intervening like what he did in my life i wanted to become a journalist and god intervened in my life and today i am for the past 40 plus years serving as a pastor so we pray for those who are seduced seduced into wrong teachings and uh, seduced into wrong lifestyles wrong wrong lifestyles then number 
We pray for the sorrowful, people who are grieving. They have experienced profound loss in their life, like what I have two years ago, coming to two years now. And it's a very painful journey. And uh, the pain never goes away, right? Uh, as much as we put a very brave front, deep down the heart is aching. And only those who have walked that path will understand it, right? So we pray continually for those who are sorrowing and those who are grieving, who have experienced terrible loss, like this mother whose daughter, age 20, dropped dead just like that. And uh, another 24-year-old girl who died of cancer died right before her parents' eyes. And the stories go on. And how do you comfort them? And uh, by the way, I'm not saying this to scare you, but there's no guarantee about life, isn't it? You may be very healthy today as young people. And one report can knock everything off the ground. One report can knock everything off the ground. So we pray for the sorrowful. Then uh, number six, we pray for the sufferers. So suffering comes in a wide variety of forms. There is mental suffering. Huge today, isn't it? Depression, suicidal tendencies. And uh, we uh, pray for those who are suffering financially. Those who are suffering relationally. Right? Who have gone through a painful divorce. And uh, life is not the same. Life is not the same. So, uh, so how do we, how do we uh, pray for them? Sufferers. You see all the images of uh, Ukraine. Children dying. Hospitals being bombed. How can you not pray continuously? As you see all those images. Right? Uh, then number seven is we pray for those who are sick. Big category. Huge category. I have at least seven on my list right now who are terminal cancer. And some of them are young. <laughs> they are not old. They are young. Terminal cancer. And uh, uh, mysterious diseases for which there is even no diagnosis. One of my beloved neighbors, missionary, came down with a severe mystery illness. And yesterday I took him out for a walk in the cold. He said, I need to go for a walk, but I need someone to come with me. I said, I'll come. And I took him for a walk around the block. I said, can we do a second round? He said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm tired now. I'm tired. I, I walked him right to the front door. I said, we'll do it again. So, so there are all kinds of people with uh, all kinds of illnesses. And we pray for them. Continuously, we lift them up to God in prayer. And then number eight, we pray for the singles. You know, every time you uh, write the word single, you have to write another word down by the side. And that's the word loneliness. Singleness and loneliness go together. So singles refer to those who are still unmarried, right? And that's a big, big category. And uh, they are advancing in years, and they are not sure whether they'll ever get married. Some of them have given up hope of ever getting married, having a family, having children. So that's a big world, the world of the singles. And my goodness, how, how we should be praying for them. Uh, there are churches that have singles ministries just to care for people like that. But uh, singles also refers to those who are widows and widowers like me. Right? Very painful. And uh, so we uh, need to continually pray for the singles. Okay? Don't assume that everything is going well with them. No, they are hurting deeply. And uh, sometimes they don't have uh, a place to vent it all out. And you and I can be that place where they can come and vent it all out. Number nine is uh, seniors seniors. And again, what a huge group uh, the seniors are. <laughs> so my new identity, even if you forget my name, 
my new identity is SS, single senior. That's my new identity, okay? And uh, you, you will have your own identity as you go through this list of 12. You've got to figure out what that is, okay? So we, we think of the seniors. And uh, again, these are people who are for the most part very lonely. They kind of feel abandoned. And uh, we, we, we had good uh, ministries to uh, seniors. The one that I grieve the most is uh, Greencrest. <laughs> Every month having 75 seniors for a near two hour service. And most of them were not even from the Christian faith. We had even Muslims who came from another building to be part of that service. Amazing, because they just wanted to be with other seniors. And we sang the songs and we told them the gospel, shared the gospel and COVID came and just crashed everything uh, down. And, uh, and they are calling and saying, when are you going to start this again? I said, we can't, our hands are tied. Till the government says we can start, we can't. So pray for the seniors. You go by a senior's building, pray for the seniors there. For me, the closest is Lamaru, where again, we had uh, all kinds of programs for the seniors there. And every time on my walk to the gym, I had to pass that uh, seniors building. And I just lift up my hands and pray. Some of them I know very well by name. I pray for them by name. Then uh, number 10, most of you seated here this morning would fall into this category, your students. So we had to pray for the students, right? You know, by the way, uh, uh, right through life, we are students. So actually my new identity is SSS, single senior student. Why? Because the, the learning never stops. The learning never stops. Uh, you will be shocked and surprised if you come to my home, the number of books I have on tables all open. I'm an avid reader. I love to read. And uh, my son came the other day and said, Dad, you've got to get rid of all this stuff. Oh, it's all cluttered. I said, son, just leave me alone. After I die, you do whatever you like. But <laughs> you know, right now, I want to enjoy these books. So uh, students, uh, you're learning. Uh, you want to advance. Uh, you want to have a good career. And right now is the time to study well, isn't it? To excel in your studies, uh, to put in all that hard work to burn the proverbial midnight oil. And, uh, but the greatest uh, uh, learning is about God, the knowledge of the holy. So be a student of the scripture. So we pray for that. We pray that uh, all of you uh, would become diligent students of the scriptures, that you would always carry this Bible with you. I was taught that from day one, carry the Bible wherever you go. What a witness it is. And uh, you have five minutes free, just open and read instead of looking at your cell phone all the time, right? Uh, just open the word and read. And uh, so be a, be a student. So we pray for the students continually. So you walk past a school, a college, you pray for the students who are there. You pray that there will be a movement of the spirit of God among them that they would desire the knowledge of God. Uh, number 11, and uh, <laughs> this is my fourth identity, really, uh, shepherds. Uh, that's another word for pastors or leaders, shepherds. So we pray for those who have been appointed by God to shepherd us, uh, to care for us, uh, to lead us. I thank God for all those who were shepherds in my life who cared for me, who invested in me, who taught me the Bible, who uh, corrected me when I was wrong. Uh, and uh, so we uh, uh, need to pray for the shepherds, for the pastors. I hope that you are praying personally for Pastor Manu and me. Uh, that uh, See, uh, when you talk on prayer, the level of disturbance, uh, cell phones ring, and uh, because Satan doesn't like this subject. And I was very, very acutely aware of that when I started this morning. Uh, distraction, disturbance uh, will happen. Uh, so shepherds, uh, I hope you're praying. As I said, for Pastor Mano, for me, I pray for a lot of pastors uh, that we would be humble and that we would faithfully feed the sheep, love the sheep, 
and guide the sheep, motivate the sheep, inspire the sheep, uh, you know, set goals for you, set goals for you. So we uh, pray continually for shepherds. And then uh, number 12 on the list is uh, the sent. These are the missionaries. The missionaries are sent ones, Acts chapter 13. Sent by the Holy Spirit and sent by the local church. Beautiful combination. Sent by the Holy Spirit, sent by the church. And uh, one of the joyous uh, moments for any local church is when we uh, lay our hands on potential missionaries and send them out into the field. I love those experiences. And uh, so we uh, pray for missionaries by name, by name, and uh, receive their prayer letters. I received a prayer letter from uh, Neil and Ingrid Miller from uh, Bangladesh, uh, working in a very difficult part of Bangladesh. And uh, now I'm praying more diligently for them because I got their prayer letter. And they have said, here are six items that you should be praying for us. So receive prayer letters from missionaries, okay? And uh, be, be committed to praying for them uh, continually. And to the degree that you and I pray, to that degree, the work of God is going to prosper in that part of the world. Bangladesh, as you know, is a predominantly Muslim country. And how, what a privilege to be able to pray for that couple. Uh, Neil has been in uh, Bangladesh for over 25 years. He knows the Bangla language like this. And now they are trying to get him citizenship, Bangla citizenship, amazing, unheard of because of his commitment to that country for over 25 years, right? So uh, here are 12 categories that you and I would do well to pray continually for. Now that brings us, I'm using the word goals. What kind of prayers should I be praying when uh, I pray continually? Uh, by the way, uh, continual prayer very often means brief prayers. You won't have time to pray long, drawn-out prayers. You won't. Usually, they are what I call sentence prayers or two-sentence prayers. As the Spirit of God prompts you, motivates you. So here are 12 items that you and I can pray for. Again, all his words, uh, as we seek to pray continuously. <laughs> right at the top of the list is the prayer of surrender. Remember the hymn? I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender, I surrender all. That's what the prayer of surrender is all about. Lord, today I surrender my mind to you. I surrender my lips to you. I surrender my hands to you. I surrender my feet to you. I surrender my money to you. I surrender my vehicle to you. I surrender my house to you. If you have a dog, I surrender my dog to you. Prayers of surrender. Another word uh, for this would be consecration. Consecration. Right? The most difficult thing to do in life is to surrender, to wave the white flag. That's the most difficult thing to do. Why? We want to be in charge. We want to be in control. So not easy to wave that white flag. And God is calling us every day to, uh, to uh, wave that white flag of surrender. I surrender to your will, Lord. I surrender to your will. Not my will, but let your will be done. Secondly, we pray for sanctification. Sanctification is a fancy word for being set apart from sin to God for holiness. So, Lord, cleanse me. Purify me. My thoughts, Lord. My eyes. What I hear. What I speak. Oh, God, cleanse me. Purify me. We get defiled so easily through the eye gate, through the ear gate, through the lip gate. We get defiled so easily. And uh, pray continuously means all the time we are praying sanctification prayers. Cleanse me and purify me, Lord. Thirdly, we pray uh, prayers of solace. Solace simply means comfort. Oh, comforter in my sorrow, Jeremiah prayed. I have personalized that for my life over and over and over again. 
O comforter in my sorrow. David said, comfort me on every side. Wow. Comfort me on every side. All four sides. Surround me with your comfort. And all of us need comfort. You don't have to lose a loved one in order to experience comfort. Loss of a dream. Loss of a dream. I, I, I have had loss of dreams. And you pray for comfort. Uh, loss of a relationship. And you pray for comfort. Lord, heal me deep down in my soul. I'm hurting. I'm bitter. I'm wounded. Heal me. Right? So we pray uh, prayers of uh, comfort. Uh, number four, uh, prayer for strength. <laughs> we are weak, folks. We are weak. Even the best of us. You think you're physically strong? Yes. Thank God for it. But it won't last. You're going to have terrible moments of even physical weakness. Oh, God, strengthen me. I remember Samson, right? Terrible failure. But in that last moment of his life, as they have plucked his eyes out and uh, they are making fun of him, the entire Philistine uh, army and the government, and they are all in a pavilion. And uh, they bring Samson out so that he can be the clown. Called to be the servant of God, now being called to be a clown. Make us laugh. My goodness, I grieve. As I think of what a fall Samson had. Right? Just make us laugh. Tell us some jokes, Sam. And in that moment, the Spirit of God came upon Samson. He realized what a terrible failure he had been. And he said, God, in your great mercy, strengthen me one final time so that I can grab these massive pillars and bring it down. And all these people will be destroyed because that's what you call me to do. God heard him. God gave him the strength. And in that one defining moment, he pulled the pillars and the whole pavilion collapsed. And Samson slew more in his death than his entire lifetime of 40 years. So we pray for strength. Oh God, give me the strength to go through the trial that I'm going through right now. Give me the strength to face up to the illness that I'm going through right now. Give me strength. Give me strength. And God will never disappoint you. He will never disappoint you. He will supply the strength. Okay? I uh, did a whole 15-minute uh, audio study on Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things that God has called me to do through the strength that God supplies me. Philippians 4.13. Number five, we pray for salvation. Salvation of the lost, yes. But that the salvation that I have received from the Lord will become more complete in my life. That I will grow in this salvation. That I will become more mature in this salvation. I will become more assured in my salvation. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Right? So I pray for salvation. For spiritual wholeness, spiritual health. That's another way of putting it. Number six, I pray for a sober sound mind. <laughs> a sober sound mind. I pray for a cool head. I pray for a thinking head. I pray for clarity. When all hell is breaking loose around me and I'm not able to think clearly, my rationality goes out through the window. I pray and say, God, please give me a sober, alert mind. Thinking biblically and thinking with clarity. And then number seven, uh, we pray for service. God, take me and use me, Lord. I don't want to go through life as a spectator. I don't want to go through life as a bench warmer, a pew warmer, a chair warmer. I want to be significantly used by you, Lord. I want to be significantly used by you. And God will take you at your word. 
and he will provide opportunities for you where you can serve him <laughs> in unbelievable capacities. So have the courage to pray the prayer of service. Lord, use me today. That's it. One sentence. No sweat. And then keep your eyes wide open to see how the Lord is going to use you. You might see a lonely person seated by himself or herself. That's the cue for you to go and sit next to that person and initiate a conversation and you're serving God. You're serving God. And then uh, number eight, we pray for spiritual growth. Don't be stagnant. On the, one, uh, on the one hand, don't be a spectator. On the other hand, don't stagnate. The worst thing in, in the spiritual life is to stagnate. No growth. Physical growth is very evident, isn't it? People grow tall. That's why I love the young people. My goodness, in the teen years, you shoot up like a coconut tree. I said, my goodness, when did you grow like this? Now you have to look up like this. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> you shoot up like a coconut tree. But uh, then for as we get older, uh, the physical growth occurs mostly around our tummies. Right, Prophet Isaiah? Right. By the way, good to have some prophets in army. It's Prophet Isaiah, Prophet Zechariah. No, not Zechariah. <laughs> not, no, Zechariah is not in action today, right? Uh, <clears throat> But uh, the growth of the heart, the enlargement of the heart, spiritually speaking, spiritual growth, right? You know, Pastor Kesavan, who, who, who has his own church, uh, for those of you who know the story, uh, he, uh, he was involved in a second degree murder, came from a Hindu background. I met him at the Toronto East uh, Detention Center. <laughs> and uh, the time that he was there, we put a Bible into his hands and we shared the gospel. And uh, then uh, he got a sentence. He got moved out to, uh, I think it was uh, Gravenhurst. He used to call me at least once a month. And I couldn't believe when he called. I thought it was Billy Graham speaking. My goodness, the way he had grown and uh, the way he knew the scriptures and being able to quote it and uh, share what God was doing in his life. Uh, he was made like the warden of the unit where he was at Gravenhurst. And he was able to counsel other uh, inmates using the word of God because they had noticed a profound change in his life. Folks, that's spiritual growth. You don't have to go through a prison term to experience that, right? I should be able to look at you young people and say, wow, how you have grown this way, but also in the heart. So one of the days I'll bring a stethoscope and I'm going to check your heart out to see how you have grown spiritually. Stethoscope, you know, stethoscope, stethoscope, right. Okay. Number nine, I pray for satisfaction. Satisfaction in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the water of life. He's the bread of life. I want to feast on him. I want to drink of him. I don't want to find my satisfaction in the things of this world. In the pleasures of this world. Right? And they abound all around us. And you, younger generation, my goodness, through the screen. Oh, my. Oh. How much of time is wasted playing video games and seated for hours in front of a screen, right? Watching whatever. When the Lord is there, satisfy me, Lord, early with your love, with your mercy, with your goodness. Total satisfaction in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then uh, prayers of silence where nothing comes out of your lips. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. The silence of worship. The silence of adoration. The silence where you can hear his still small voice. In my devotional reading this morning, I was reading about Elijah. 
and God gave a spectacular show of himself through the earthquake, through the fire, through the wind, but God was not in it. And then came a still, small voice. And you can hear the still, small voice only in silence. So Lord, teach me to turn the volume down on all the stuff that goes around me, the world. Teach me to turn the volume down so that my ears are fine-tuned to hearing the only voice that really matters, and that's the voice of God. A 12-year-old boy in the temple was woken up at night time when God said, Samuel, Samuel, 12 years old. He heard the voice of God in the silence of the night. And then uh, number 11 is song. <laughs> we break out into a song. Praying continually involves worship. And that involves breaking out into a song. And very often I just take one stanza of a, of a, of a hymn and I just, I just let it go. I just release it uh, as worship to the Lord, right? Sometimes I don't even know the tune, but I love the words. And I release it as worship to the Lord. And then, of course, number 12 is uh, praying scripture. That's why we encourage you to me uh, memorize Bible verses. Praying continually means you take a verse from the Bible and you're able to pray it. You're able to pray it. Any part of the Bible, you can take uh, the portion you read and you can convert it into a prayer. So here are 12 things that you can do uh, to enhance your personal prayer life. Right? Now, finally, I, I'm going to rush through this. Point C, methods. In order to pray continually, you need to keep three things in mind. You've got to have your fixed times of prayer. That's a must. That's what we call the quiet time. <laughs> there has got to be that discipline, right? You have to have it in the morning. You've got to be a morning glory. I know some of you are night owls. My son was a night owl. I tried my best to convert him to a morning glory. Never succeeded in doing it. Never succeeded, right? But you've got to be a morning glory that's a flower that lasts only for the daytime. With noon, it's gone. So you need to have fixed times, like Daniel, three times a day, fixed times, where he faced Jerusalem and he prayed. That is what is going to help you to pray continually right through the day. If you don't have a fixed time for prayer, then uh, you're not going to pray continually. Psalm 55, uh, the psalm is identified, again, three time zones, evening, morning, and noon, right? And once you have that discipline, you're going to pray without intermission right through the day. So a fixed time of prayer is critically important. The second thing is, you've got to focus on your work, whatever the work is for the day. If it is driving, you've got to focus on your driving. <laughs> I do most of my uh, driving prayers uh, when we stop at a red light. That's a very uh, healthy thing to do, to pray at a red light. Not that the light would turn green, but you, 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 you saw something and uh, you want to pray for that. You heard an ambulance go by and you're praying, oh God, please undertake for that emergency. Praying continuously, right? So focus on your work. As a student, while you're studying, while you're doing your work, then you can just lean back on your chair and you can do a sentence prayer. You can do a sentence prayer. Some email came and my goodness, oh, I got to pray over this. You pray over that email. Or somebody called you and oh, my goodness, I got to pray for this person. Pray continually after you have had your fixed time of prayer. Find creative ways to pray throughout the day. Obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit. The news is one way that you can use to pray continually. Be careful about news because you can get very depressed. So be very careful. How much of news you consume? 
don't overconsume news you will end up in depression but you need to know enough news to be able to pray continuously the sounds that you hear around you a child crying you can pray for that child right uh, the sights that you see as i said an ambulance going by fire truck going by okay a single mother walking with her little child you pray for both the mother and the child you use your eyes you use your ears in order to pray continually right so uh, what i shared with you today is not rocket science it is just something i have learned over the years and i thought of giving you a list so that it will help you very practically to be able to pray intelligently and continuously i hope some of you would give us feedback and say pastor i practice some of the things that you have been teaching and it works it works i am growing in this area i am growing in this area i am growing in this area wow that's the greatest joy i will have i love feedback folks when i don't get feedback i wonder what is happening that's why i get your emails that's why i put you on whatsapp why once in a way send a feedback right if you don't like me say that if you don't like you pastor i can handle it right i'll go to mercy church this is grace church i'll just <laughs> we have mercy will be shown me <laughs> okay so we are going to transition into our into our holy communion and uh, i know for those of you who are in person you have already received your little packet and uh, in order to prepare us we are going to read uh, from matthew 26 and i'm wondering whether you can bring this up on the screen the lord jesus as he observed the passover with his uh, disciples and uh, this is uh, matthew 26 uh, is it 26 or 25 uh, sorry 20 yeah 26 and we are going to read from verse uh, 26 Matthew 26 26 while they were eating Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body then he took the cup gave thanks and offered it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins so why do we observe holy communion because we are a very forgetful people and the lord has established this uh, uh, institution uh, why so that we can remember him we can remember his death his resurrection and his soon coming and we must never forget calvary that's why we sang those songs on the cross today the bread reminds us of the body of the lord jesus uh, that was battered bruised spat upon lacerated on your behalf and my behalf and the lord died as a sacrifice substitute savior so this bread reminds us of the price that the lord jesus paid on the cross in order to secure our salvation but before we partake of these holy emblems uh, we must make sure that we are right with the lord and we are right with each other so i trust you have taken time to prepare your heart confess sin and that you and i can partake of these holy emblems in a worthy manner so i'm going to lead you in a brief prayer and then we are going to partake of these holy emblems so these emblems are only for those who have personally trusted the lord jesus for salvation you have repented of your sins you have opened up your life to him and you have obeyed the lord in the waters of baptism you are walking in his path and these emblems are only for you right if you don't know the lord please refrain from partaking because the table of the lord won't be a table of blessing it will be a table of condemnation that's what the bible teaches so let's pray 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for so willingly offering yourself for us on the cross. You died the death that we should have died. We thank you that you bore all our sins on your body. You were the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. We are so profoundly thankful. In your great mercy, Lord, forgive us all our sins. Lord, we have failed you. We have been spectators. We have been stagnant. We have not served you as we should. We have been lethargic spiritually. Have mercy upon us. Forgive us. And help us to partake of these holy emblems with a humble heart and a grateful heart and a broken heart. Thank you for all what you have done for us, Lord Jesus. And we eagerly await your soon return to see you face to face and to be with you forever. We thank you for this provision that you have made through your death and resurrection. And so we take the bread into our hand and we remember that this bread is a symbol of what the Lord accomplished for us at the cross. And when you place it on your tongue, you can simply say, thank you, Lord, for dying for me. Will you say those words as you partake? Thank you, Lord, for dying for me, for shedding your blood for me. Then we take the cup. The cup is symbolic of the precious blood that was shed for us. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood avails for you and for me. Those are the words of a hymn writer. And uh, so we thank the Lord for the power of his blood the power to wash away all our sins and to give us victory over the powers of darkness. So let's partake together with profound gratitude of the cup. Thank you, Lord, for this sweet remembrance of the all-glorious person of our Lord Jesus Christ, at the table of the Lord. Thank you that he prayed in the garden, not my will, but let your will be done. And he went through the agony of the cross. And today we experience salvation. He shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. Strengthen us for the week ahead that we might love you and live for you and labor for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.